vast majority of Palestinians are not Hamas. Hamas does not represent Palestinian people. Palestinian people are suffering greatly as well. We mourn the loss of innocent Palestinian lives like the entire world. I was outraged and saddened by the enormous loss of life yesterday in the hospital in Gaza. Unknown member, number of people were killed in that explosion yesterday at the al Ahdi hospital in Gaza City. According to NBC News, a spokesman for the Palestinian Health Ministry said, Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are certainly thankful and grateful to the Almighty God for our being here. Our being here is not against our will but it is by the gift of God. We are certainly thankful and praying for those that are sick among us, for those that are going through hard trials and tribulations, and we certainly pray for those who are struggling in war-torn countries but well, it is a horrible thing when you don't know where or how you're going to live and be safe we're thankful all of us have somewhere to lay our heads and we have somewhere that we can reasonably feel safe. All right, let us get started here tonight as we continue our study in the book of Job and do an old favorite, Father Alone. Tempted and tried, we off made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long when there are the living about us never molested. Though in the room, Father, along we we'll know all about it. Father, along we we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother. 
brother live in the sunshine we'll understand it all by and by when death has come and taken our one it leave our home so lonely and dreary then do we wonder why others prosper living so weak year after year father along we know all about it father Understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory. When he comes from his home in the sky, then we will see him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. Father, alone we'll know all about. Father alone will understand why Cheer up my brother Live in the sunshine We'll understand it All by and by pray eternal God our Father we come now with heads bowed and hearts humbled we thank you oh God that things are as well as they are we ask that you would go with us and stand by us that you would lead guide and direct us we pray oh God tonight first for those that are sick among us for there seems to be so much sickness in the land and country. We ask, O oh God, that you would heal the land, and that you would heal the sick in our midst. Restore them to full health. Restore them so that they can once again be able to fellowship with us in praising and worshiping the Lord. We pray now, O oh God, that you would look upon those that are in the midst of a turmoil, that you would give them comfort in their hour of need. Help them, O oh God. Help them to be what you would have them to be. Help them. find comfort in knowing that there is a reality in serving a true and living God. We pray, O oh God, that you would be merciful to sinners like us. We pray, O oh God, for our nation tonight, for our nation is in turmoil. Our nation is in a bad situation, and we need your help. We need you to help regulate the minds and hearts of our politicians so that they might do the things that will help people that are in need, people that have worked hard all their lives. And when it's time for them to enjoy the fruits of their labor, they are those that want to deny them their right. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, heal our land. Touch those folks that are warring tonight. Help, oh God, 
them to resolve their issues and negotiate a lasting peace. This and all blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, tonight, we continue our study in the book of Job, and tonight, we're going to talk about consoling someone going through adversity, consoling Consoling someone going through adversity. In our last lesson, Eliphaz was more vicious in his attack on Job than he was in his first speech. And tonight's lesson is coming from Job chapter 18 and 19. He accused Job of being a terrible, hardened sinner who defiled the counsel of God. Eliphaz's theology is simple. God punishes the wicked and rewards the righteous. That is true in the afterlife, but not in this world. Here's how Jesus tells us in Matthew 5 and 45, and this is from the New King James, it says that you may be the sons of your father in heaven, for he makes him his son rise on the evil and the good and send rain on the just and on the unjust. Well, let's look at what it says here. He maketh the sun rise on the evil. There is nothing greater than to imitate God in doing good to your enemies. There is nothing greater than imitating God in doing good to our enemies. Do good to them. Yes, that's your enemy, but still, do good. Treat them right. All the creatures of God pronounce the sentence of condemnation on the revengeful. And this sentence is written by the rays of the sun and with the drops of the rain and indeed by all the nature, the natural good things. The use of which God freely gives to his enemies. He lets them use all of that. The good things in nature the enemies of God use it as well as the children of God. If God had not loved us while we were his enemies, we could have never become his children. We shall cease to be such as soon as we cease to imitate him. He makes it sunshine. He makes the sun to rise on the evil. Sends the rain on the just and the evil. See, sometimes, uh, for some reason or another, some of us, uh, we, we want to follow a school of thought that says that if you are a 
born again, filled with the Holy Ghost believer, that only good will come your way. There won't be anything bad coming your way. Only good. The songwriter expressed it best. I've had some good days. And I've had some bad days. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. I still know I'm a child of the king. Because he knows what's best for me. He gives me what I need when I need it. Not a minute before, but when I need it. He steps right in just when I need him most. Since Job is suffering, his friends think he must be wicked. And these two chapters, chapters 18 and 19, we find three principles of consoling someone going through adversity. The first is be gentle and not judgmental. Chapter 18, verses 1 through 21. Be gentle and not judgmental. We judge folks by, well, they did such and such thing, and I can't deal with that. Don't say that. Because you may end up next week doing something just as bad or worse. And instead of being judgmental, be gentle. A little kindness. It'll come back to you. Cast thy bread upon the water. And after many days, getting more nervous with Job, Bildad begins by saying, if Job would stop talking and listen for a little while, I notice I said be gentle. But Bill there to say, if you would just shut up. One of us will speak. In other words, Job, you need to shut up and listen. Because if you wasn't doing wrong, God wouldn't be punishing you like this. Job has claimed God is tearing him up. Verse 16, uh, chapter 16 and verse 9. And this is probably referring to a wild animal ripping apart its prey. However, Bildad said Job is tearing up himself with his own anger. Your own anger is tearing you up. Chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. Next, Bill Dad begins a long speech that goes to the end of this chapter about the terrible fate of the wicked since he thinks Job's adversity is the results of his sins. He says, the light of the wicked will be put out and the flame of his fire will be snuffed out, leaving their tents dark. Verse Chapter 18, verses 5 and 6. In ancient times, fire and light were symbols of comfort, warmth, and happiness. Bildad says, the strong steps of the wicked will be shortened and their schemes will be their downfall. Well, it don't look like it's hurting a certain facet of our politicians in Washington these days. But yet, the final bell has not sounded. He describes Job's attitude as a snare, a trap, and a tenor that frightens him. Tells Job his unrepentance, his unrepentant attitude has depleted his strength. And disaster is ready for him. Bildad contends by saying Job is torn from the security of his tent and brought to the king of terrors. 
which refers to the place of the dead. He also says, Job remembrance will perish from the earth and no one will remember his name. But let's look at what Bildad adds in verse 19 of chapter 18. And this is from God's Word translation. He will not have any children or descendants among his people or any survivors where he used to live. Well, what made him say that? You know the story. All of Job's children are dead. He would say, you shall never have sons nor nephews, children nor grandchildren to enjoy his estate and bear up his name, nor shall there be any remaining in his dwelling akin to him. Sin entails a curse upon prosperity. And the iniquities of the father is often visited upon the children. Herein also is, is what Bill Dad was probably reflecting on. He was saying that Job, you're gonna die. Your children are already dead. Your servants are already dead. And for further proof, this ought to tell you you are a wicked man. What more proof do you need? All your children dead. Sons and daughters, so you ain't going to have no grandchildren. You ain't going to have no nephews. You ain't going to have nobody. When you dead, nobody going to remember your name. Because you are a wicked person. Can you imagine going to somebody trying to console them? and they sick, and they having a hard time, and you telling them, talking to them like this, you need to be gentle. And not judgmental. If you hadn't have been so stupid, I don't need to hear that when I'm suffering, if I hadn't have been so stupid. You don't have to tell me that. By then, I figured out I made a stupid move. I made a dumb move. I need some constellation. Well, one would think that Bill Dad had exhausted his opinion of the fate of the wicked. However, when we look into chapter 18, verse 20, and this is from the Bible in basic English, it says, At this fate, those of the West are shocked. Those of the East are overcome with fear. In other words, the whole world is astonished and horrified at the completeness of the destruction of the wicked. The only thing left for judgment to be complete is for Job to die. What kind of counselor is that? To tell the man that's suffering that lost everything he done worked for. The only thing left for you to do is die. Just die. You lost everything. It's obvious you're wicked. Ain't, ain't but one thing to complete this. Just die. If somebody would came to you, supposed to be consoling you and start talking to you like that, what do you think you would do? Well, 
Well, you, you probably pull oh. one of those old West moves. I'm going to the back room, and when I get back from the back room, don't you be here. The question becomes, what application can we find from Bill Dad's words, from his example? What can we learn to avoid? One basic principle we can remember when consoling someone going through adversity is be gentle. Be gentle and not judgmental. Don't judge them by, because of what they are going through. I think we talked about this once before. Sometimes we are going through things so that others can see how we are handling the situation so when it's their time, they'll know how to conduct themselves. Bill Dad is the opposite of what Titus 3 and 2 says. Titus 3 and 2 says, to say no evil of any man, not be a fighter, to give way to others, to be gentle in behavior to all men. There are times when we're talking, or I'm when I'm talking to somebody, and they begin to talk, and I'm listening to what they are saying, and I hear what they are saying, and I know that they are not 100% right, but in order to keep down confusion, I'll just give way and let them, well, if that's the way you see it. Because I know if I try to correct them, it's just going to start an argument. And I'm there to console them. And there's been plenty of times when somebody has been in that state of mind and they made a statement and I did not challenge that statement. A few minutes later, they come back and say, you know what? I said something, that ain't right. I shouldn't even be thinking like that. I was gentle with them, they came around to understand what they had said was wrong. Now they are ready for my advice. And I'm going to tell you something about giving advice. You never solve the problem for them. You let them solve the problem. You are not there to tell them what to do. You are there to let them vent. Now what Titus was saying to us is don't ever think that you are better than you really are. You ain't all letting a bag of chips. You might be good, but you're not as good as you think you are. Be honest in your reevaluation of yourself, measuring yourself by the faith God has given us. Humility then boils down to having an honest estimate of ourselves before God. If you were standing before God, How do you think you would be evaluated? So why are you being so harsh with somebody that's going through adversity? Why? You think that's going to make you look big? That's going to make you look smart?
Be gentle and don't judge. Always be gentle and never judge. And a lot of times, just saying it out loud, talking it out loud, you come up with the solution. The person that comes up will come up with the right solution. They just needed somebody to, to, to practice on. Somebody to talk, talk it out with. And you don't really have to say nothing. Just be a good listener. And we're gonna, and we're gonna get into that. How to listen. Because a lot of us nowadays don't know how to listen in this microwave age. We don't know how to listen to nothing unless we got them things stuck in their ear. Listen. You remember as a teenager how you could learn a song? You hear it on the radio two or three times and you learn it. And the part you didn't know when you get to that part, you go, mm -hmm, that's the way the story go. And you eventually learn the whole song. Be gentle. Don't solve the problem for them. Listen and don't judge them. Let them talk. Let them get it off the chest. Nine times out of ten, once they actually hear what they're saying, if it's that far out in left field, they'll hear it and say, oh, my goodness. Did I really say that? Did I really do that? I'll never do that again. But here it is, the story in a nutshell, in this part of the lesson. Job is looking for consolation and they are condemning him because they are saying there's no way you can be such a righteous and holy man and you catching all this hell. Think about that when you start asking, why me, Lord? Why does it look like every time I turn around something going wrong with it? Why me? The question might be, why not you? Because you say you're a child of God. You say you're trusting in him. And now prove it by being faithful. And we're going to get into in this next part of the lesson on next week, we're going to get into some sayings that some passages of the scripture that you hear all the time and most of the time when we use these passages we take them totally out of context let us pray eternal god our father we are thankful and grateful for another opportunity to study your word we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard we pray now O oh god that you would open our minds and our hearts and our understanding so that we might become better servants unto thee. We ask you, O God, to be with us now as we go through this difficult period. We know that this is a difficult time, not only here in the United States, but all over the world. There's difficulty there. There's so much fighting and unnecessary killing going on in the Far East. And we ask you, O God, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch the hearts and minds of those people that have been warring and fighting ever since the days of the scripture. We ask that you would intervene, O oh God, and help them to settle their differences. We pray for uh, the sick and the shut-in. We ask you, O oh God, to heal them, touch their bodies, heal them. We ask you in the name of Jesus to please uh, have mercy on them. 
this and all blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.